Careers. It's always been up. I've always trained down here, the five star ABC. I had uh, 43 amateur fights, 130 of them. Boxed uh, a lot of good like, pros now, he's doing well. The likes of Bulliani, Wilder, Higgins. So I've been in there, mix it with all the good fellas. Um, I didn't have a bad amateur career, but I always had the better pro style. Everyone said I threw a lot of body shots, which most judges don't score. And um, yeah, I'm. I'm I think I'll do better as a pro and after I'm doing better as a pro. Um, the Gary Bolden fight, I took, got offered, I think it's my fourth pro fight, got offered uh, ex, he just come off a loss with Billy Joe Saunders to Gary Bolden and uh, he was like, obviously, obviously, as you know, he was Southern Area Champion, but I got offered the fight and Really excited, took it. I was the away fight. I was, I didn't, as a novice pro, I didn't know much about like they were fighting on away shows, home shows. I thought if you, if you win, win the fight, you win the fight. But I just thought I didn't have, I thought I lost to the ref that night. He, he gave it the wrong decision. Boxing news, so I won by four rounds. But it's that's boxing. You can't, you can't keep moaning about it. If you lost, you lost. And I tried to get the rematch, can't get it. But now it's a bit of a journey. When it's a bit like a nothing fight, if I think I've beaten now. So. Just put that behind me, moved on, it's not phased me, I feel like an unbeaten fighter still. Um. It's Maxwell on the beat. I was training in Tenerife when I got the phone call from Steve saying we're fighting a big punch in Mikulaskis and he's knocked everyone out in so many seconds in the first round. So obviously it's a big risk but I trust Steve and the good wins for my career and I don't think they would have picked that fight if it wasn't right for me. Obviously it's a risk. He did have the punch power because I could feel it in. Obviously he was only landing on gloves and stuff but I could feel the power was there. So I could have gone either way. I could have got caught and played myself but it's a risk I took. Went on and beat him and you know. Markham coming forward again. That's that's again. Another punish another right hand to the body. You can see the way he's dropped his left hand there. He's hurt, he's hurt there. He does not want to get in there again. Taking Please. deep breaths, sucking it up. In comes Markham again. Lee's got to keep his discipline here. This is where McLaughlin's will be very, very, very dangerous. Well, that was a vicious body shot against Danny Brown that won that one. And he's providing more of the same here, Markham. You see the way he's protecting them ribs there. He does not like that right hand to the body. He just wants to faint a little bit upstairs and keep bringing that shot round again. Just keep throwing and it. And he's just covering up and ducking it. That's a great shot. In comes Markham. He could finish him here if he really goes for it. Markham. Throwing the punches. He's looking closely. Mikhail Auskas is just ducking back onto the road. The like, the throw up and down he goes. Wow. Once again we go to the count. <laughs> Olivia Goodwin on her feet. Followed up that fight from with uh, Diego Burton, who was another unbeaten fighter. So there's two unbeaten fighters in a row. Who was, I didn't know much about him. He was a good amateur. Again, Steve likes to put on 50-50 fights. I like to be tested, and it's a, it's a good fight. It's an even fight, all for all three. I think I was edging it, and then I caught him in the last round. And that's, that's just the way it goes. I'm a good friend to Diego. He's coming down for sparring next week. He's a top fighter and a top gent, and you know, we remain good friends. He could open himself up to Markham, but it's a risk he's got to take if he wants to win this fight. Big shot. feel a punch and boy did he feel that one he gave a rueful smile as he hit the canvas as if to say yeah you did finally catch his legs me aren't one. steady it's could that be stopped. was a great right hand Referees here comes this. Markham and Curtis says that is enough he's seen enough 
and again, there's a smile from Burton. Nervous, get not nervous, but you do turn around sparring and pads and stuff like that. But in a fight in front of a live crowd, and it's, it's just different, different ball game. It, Aaron Matthews come to win, quite a good fight, trained hard. It's even, good, even fight, close fight. I thought I was clear winner because I was moaning after saying I got robbed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I'm um, my next turn around. You see a different, uh, different fighter for me because I know, I know now I've done that. 10 rounds experience in the ring and um, that's the same cross off my mind now and I've been going and do a bit more in them rounds and let loose a bit more. I thought um, if Lee's first 10 round, as he said earlier, he, he, he found it hard towards the end but he, uh, he, he was trying to save a bit, you know, but now he knows he can do the 10 rounds and let it go for every round if he wants to have a little rest round in between. but. Uh, Harry Matthews, a good fight, Harry gave him a really good fight, I, I thought he well won it, uh, well for everything he threw to Lee was taken on his arms, a um, couple of punches got through but not many of them, and points wise I think Lee was well in front. I know he's, he's just come off again, a like, good match against Davis, he's, um, I think he's got good Fairly good record. I've, he's fought the likes of uh, George Groves, Chris Eubank Jr. I think he's been stopped by both of them. I've watched the uh, Groves fight and I thought it was a bit premature stoppage. He's just come off a knockout victory off a uh, Italian prospect, uh, so which puts his ranking like, uh, as higher up. So, if, so I beat him, pushed me up rankings. So that's another, another little step up in class for me. Just moving on slowly, listening to the, my team, my manager, and um, yeah, just going st step by step, slowly, and then hopefully if I come for this fight, maybe another 10 round and move on to the southern area or something like that, but I'll have to, that 10 round experience in my bank. Um, really, so once I get up to that level, just stay up there and dominate. He works every day as well, he's not fortunate enough to have a really good sponsor there pack up work and just work the gym so we fit it in. He does his own thing in the morning. He might go running, he might go running the gym and um, do a bit. I do mostly early evenings with him. Um, pack work, sparring, stuff like that. But general fitness where he keeps himself in. First of life, I'm a carpenter by trade. I work I'm very busy at the minute, but I'm self employed. I'm working like seven days a week, so I'm training before, before work and after work, which takes a lot out of here. But it's, um, I think it gets me fitter and mentally stronger. Uh, my job's quite physical, but you now if I've got to move, say, 10 sheets of ply, I'm just, I look at it as a workout, so it's uh, a pluses and there's bad sides to it, you know. I've just I moved. I live with my girlfriend Louise in uh, Grays now. Just moved. Uh, been a two bedroom flat. Just moved there. I'm very happy and that. But again, I've got to work six seven days a week to just like to pay the mortgage and to pay for my training fees and stuff. I've got a very good sponsor, Martin Gowin, um, Acorn Insurance, Fairton Vodka, who helps me out financially. Um, yeah, so 